What's up, my TGM Television crew on YouTube? What's up, TGM Television on YouTube? Good evening, Facebook. And I'm waiting on the Instagram connection to come on. I am Minister Marcus. Welcome to the Maximize Your Life Bible Study. Uh, you guys on Instagram may be getting it late because it's still waiting on the connection. Hopefully it comes through. If not, I'll be rebooting it for y'all. But um, it's great to see everybody once again. It's on Wednesday night. And you know what I do on Wednesday nights? I come on, I try to encourage people, you know, who uh, may be struggling in their faith or have maybe dealing with some stuff, you know, whatever that may be. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to fix my uh, Instagram. Uh, but anyway, and so what I do is I really just try to help encourage people. I try to be that voice that nobody was for me. Um, and uh, so we're going to get right into it. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time. Where we're going tonight, we're back in Exodus. I thought last Wednesday was uh was the last Wednesday in uh this month and so I was really prepared to go into Leviticus but we this is the last uh Wednesday that we're gonna be in Exodus um so I want you to open up open up your Bibles we are in Exodus chapter four tonight and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of give a couple of points like two points that 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 are gonna go back and go over what we already went over just to bring y'all up to speed and then, you know, for the last one. So I got three things for y'all tonight. And I don't plan on being on long, being on long tonight. Um, but we are in Exodus chapter 4. Next month, we are going to Leviticus. We're doing one book every single month. And uh, for those of you who do go to our website, what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to be telling you guys what, uh, what chapters to read throughout the week so that we can all be on the same page. All right. And so you guys can kind of be willing and ready for that Bible study on Wednesday night. All right. So tonight we're going to Exodus, our last week in Exodus. And so, as I said, I'm going to try to review and then, you know, go ahead and close us out. So what we are in Exodus chapter four, verse one and two, just two verses. I'm going to give you three things tonight and then we're going to shut it down. All right. So Exodus chapter four, uh, verse one and two. And it says, and I'm reading out the King James version. If you got another version, it's cool. Just get a version that you can understand. All right. So. Exodus chapter four, and Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me nor hear my voice for they will say the Lord has not appeared unto you. And here's this, this, I love this verse number two. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in your hand? And he said, a rod. Now I want you to skip down to verse 17 and it says, and you shall take this rod in your hand and with this you shall do all the signs. All right. And so I don't really have a topic. I'm just going to give you three things that help you boost your spirituality. Hopefully it speaks to you. And so where we are in Exodus and, and, and most of you know this, or, or those of you that don't know, Exodus is the book of the Bible that God delivers the children of Israel from Egypt. I know some of you have heard of this story. Some of you may have not. I'm not going to go through it all. I just want to get you up to where we are. Uh, Exodus is the book that God delivers Israel from, from Egypt. And he is intending to take them into the spirit, the, I mean, the, the promised land, which is the land of Canaan. And so in Exodus, what God does is he just, he delivers them from Egypt and he uses Moses to take them from Egypt and uh, first to the Mount of Sinai, and then uh, to the land of Canaan. And so what I want to uh, pinpoint tonight is the fact, what's up, my brother? I see you. What's up, my brother? What, what I want to start with tonight is the fact that God uses Moses. I want, I, want to, I want to point out the fact that God uses Moses. God says, I have come down to deliver them, but I'm going to send you. And, and, and I don't know if that, that, you know, kind of, but for me, when I read stuff like that, I'm always looking skeptical. I'm like, wait a minute. So if you coming down, what do you need me for? You know what I'm saying? Like, why you can't just go and do what it is that you got to do and just let me be a bystander on the side? You know what I'm saying? And so this is why this is number one tonight, but because God wants to deliver Israel, but he's got to use a vessel. Understand that God is a spirit. So anything that God is going to do in this world is going to be through a vessel. And so the first thing I want to pinpoint is that God wants to do it through you. And I want you to say that. Say, God wants to do it through me, not for you, not to you, but through you. And I want us to get that, that God says, I have come down to deliver them, 
but he sends Moses. Why Moses? Because Moses is going to be the instrument of change. Moses is going to be the instrument of change. And I think that's significant because we are always expecting God to do things in our lives outside of our own activity. And one of the TGM quotes this week on Instagram was that God wants to do something amazing in your life. God wants to do something different and God wants to change some things in your life for the better, but it will not happen without some changes from you. And I want you to understand that you are the instrument of change that God God is going to use in your own life. You have to be the, your own instrument. I know some of you have been praying for some things. I know I get those in, uh, inboxes all the time. I get those emails all the time, those DMs all the time about I'm waiting on God to do it. And my response to them is, how would you feel if I told you that God was going to use you to the extent that your hands move? That means if your hands never move, God is not going to move on your behalf. Hear me when I say that, that God used Moses as an instrument of deliverance for Israel. The power is going to be manifested through you. And I want you to get that. It's either going to happen or not happen because of you. One of the things that I, I find myself having to tell a lot of people, especially about God, is that God is so much beyond church. They just tell you to spin around three times and say, Jesus at church. And I got you. I got you. But when it comes time to see and change in your life, God wants to do it through you. We need to get out of the mindset that God is going to make things happen in our lives without action from us. When you move, that's when God moves. He says, Moses, I want to deliver the children of Israel through you. And I want you to hear me when I say this. And this number one, say, God is going to do it through me. God is going to transform some things in your life through you. God is going to reach some people through you. God is going to bless somebody through you. Hear me when I say that. God is going to deliver somebody through you. Say it's going to happen through me. It's going to happen through me. Yes, I had to decide that I it was going to happen through me. Generation of wealth is coming to my family through me. If God is going to move in your marriage, he's going to do it through you. If God is going to move in your finances, he's going to do it through you. If God is going to do something great in your family, I want you to get this in your mind. Say, it's going to happen through me. If you want your relationship to get better, it's going to happen through you. God has to use a vessel. It's going to be through you. So number one, number one has to be, it's going to happen through me. It's going to happen through me. And what if I told you, right? What if I told you that if you're waiting on God to do something in your life, he's waiting on you to do something in your life, that God is not going to move before or after you move, but he moves when you move. My granddad used to say like this, once you take one step, then God will make the next step. But many of us, we're sitting back waiting on God, not realizing that God is sitting back waiting on you. Say, it's going to happen through me. If you want to make more money, God is going to bless you, but he got to see you moving, right? And this is how faith comes uh, how faith becomes alive in your life. It's not by talking about it. It's not by just shouting at church. It's not by throwing up your hands when he say on the third day he rose, but it's about making moves in your life. And I don't want to stay too long, but I want you to understand that God is going to transform your life or transform the things in your life through you. All right. So that's number one. It's going to happen through me. All right. So we're moving to number two. So here's what God, Moses, Moses says to God, he says, God, what if they don't believe me? What if they don't listen to me? What if they say, right, that you ain't really sent from God? And then God tells him, and I love this. I love this. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible because God says, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? I want to look at, I want you to get this, that God does not tell Moses to use anything that he does not already have. Oh man, I, I, I could just stay there. I, I, I could just stay there that God does not tell Moses to use anything that he does not already have. And here's the thing that Moses didn't realize that his preparation his preparation. Moses already had everything that he needed to accomplish God's purpose, but he didn't realize it. He did not realize, get this, because we're going to number two, that God had been preparing him 
through his life's experiences. And I want you to hear me when I say this. Number two is the power is in the preparation. The power is in the preparation. See, we are trained to believe that the power is reaching the purpose, but the power is born in the preparation. Hear me when I say this, that the 40 years that Moses had in Egypt was his preparation. The 40 years that he was in Midian was his preparation for what? For the purpose that God was going to birth in him 80 years down the line to deliver a nation. And I want you to hear me when I say that, that sometimes you don't get that the things that you go through, I had to learn this, the things that you experience, the disappointments, the heartache, the, the, the lies that people told on you, the different things that you had to go through in your life was only for preparation. Well, look, the power is in preparation. Preparation for what? For my purpose. You don't see how it goes together. If you look at 40 years in Egypt, right, it looks nothing like 40 years in Midian. If you see 40 years as being the prince and then you see 40 years being the shepherd, it doesn't look like it goes together. But here's what I want you to hear me when I say this, that the power is in preparation, that God took what looked like it didn't go together in Moses' life and he used it to work so that Moses would be right for his purpose. And I, I don't know who that's for tonight, but I wonder if you're trying to figure out why you had to go through some things or, or try to understand why things went this way or why things didn't go the way that you expected them to go. But here I am here to tell you tonight that it was all for preparation. What if the problem that you overcame was just preparation? What if the pain that you had to endure was just preparation? Come on, say, God is preparing me. What if that was your preparation? He says to Moses, you already got what it takes, Moses. You didn't know it, but I was preparing you the entire time that God aligned his life experiences in order to prepare him for his purpose. And I wonder if that's for you. I don't know if that's just for y'all, but it did me some good once I understood that the things that seem like they didn't make sense in my life. Once I got to purpose, it started making sense. And I want you to do this. I want you to look at your set of keys, right? And if you look at one of your set of keys, each key is cut very differently. And you will look at that key and that key has no significant purpose until you go to put it in a lot. And it's just the same way with purpose that God cuts our lives. And it seems like it don't go together until you get to the place that you're supposed to be in. And I want you to hear me when I say that, that God has, oh, I feel like that that God has been preparing you for your purpose. It starts to make sense once you get where you're supposed to be. And this is my job. This is why I love my job, because my job is to help people to understand that your life is not just a series of events, that there is a real God that's doing something that's moving very subtly. And if you're not paying attention, you will miss it. But that's the look. That's why that's why you need to watch me on Wednesday nights, because I'm here to help you. I want you to hear me when I say that, that every single thing about your life has been God preparing you for your purpose. Moses, you got what it takes, bro. Take the staff. The staff is the representative representation of the preparation. Stop looking at the pain that you're going through. Stop looking at the problem and start looking beyond it to the purpose. Maybe the pain is there to produce a, come on, hear me when I say that. Maybe the problem is there to get you to your, come on, purpose. Come on, look. And here's why are we talking about purpose. I had to learn this. I would pray for so many things, right? And I know some of you, I get these emails and I've been praying for this for years and God still haven't given it to me. I've been praying for this and I've been praying for that. And here's my question. My question, if God was to give it to you, are you prepared for it? I hear you praying for $10,000, but are you prepared for it? The growth that you want to see in your business, are you prepared for it? And I ask people this, you said you want a husband, but are you prepared for, come on, are you prepared to be a wife? You saying you want a wife, but are you prepared to be a husband? And here's the thing, when you start talking about that, that God has been, this is a preparation, right? Number two, that the pain was preparation. And look, when you start talking about that, you got to start Stop just praying for stuff and start praying, God, prepare me. Get me ready to receive what it is that I pray for. All right. So I'm at 13 minutes. I got to move. But I want you to hear me when I say this, that Moses had been, God had been working in Moses' life and Moses couldn't see it. He didn't know it. But when he got to his purpose, he was still unsure of himself because he didn't know that God had been allow, allowing different things and circumstances to happen in his life. And I'm going to give you another example before I move on. There was a lady who came to me and she said, Minister Marcus, I'm having a struggle with coming to God and believing in God because I was molested when I was younger. She said that somebody in her family 
family had molested her and it had broke her in places that she didn't even know that she could be broken in emotionally and things were difficult in her life. And we had a conversation and in that initial conversation, she was very reluctant. And here's what I said to her. I said, I want you to hear me that God does not waste your pain. Everything that you have been through, God did not waste your pain. He did not waste your pain. And I told her, I, need, I said, go back home and pray for a purpose. Come on, hear me when I say that. I said, go home and pray for a purpose. If there was pain in your life, it was pain in your life for a purpose. And then the next few weeks, she came back and she talked to me. She said, Minister Marcus, I want to thank you. And I, I was like, why you want to thank me? And here's what she said. She said that she had talked to a young lady and she could tell that this young lady was going through, come on, the same thing that she had went through, but nobody had picked up on it. The young lady's mom didn't pick up on it. None, none of her family members picked up on it, but she said, I was able to pick up on it. Why? Because I had went through the same things. And then from there, it built and she created a whole community and network to help young ladies who were abused. And all I'm telling you is, is that the pain, the things that you think that, that, that have nothing to do with one another, that God is using that and you may not understand it until you get to the purpose. Best. Come on, I want you to hear me when I say that. Move beyond the pain and start looking for purpose. All right, so that's number two. Here's number three, and I'm done. God said to Moses, what do you have in your hand? And I think that's significant because we're always asking God for more. And I think we always ask God for more because we don't correctly view the things that we have. It's like asking God for more money when he's already blessed you with enough money to take care of the things that you need to take care of. But because we're so used to wanting more, we're so used to desiring more, right? We always got to have more, right? That we don't pay attention. Stop looking at what you don't have and let God use what you do have, which brings me to number three. God says to Moses, I want you to take this shepherd's staff and I'm going to use that staff to deliver the children of Israel. And Moses is looking like this is just a shepherd's staff. But I want you to hear me when I say this. It is just a shepherd's staff, but it's different when you add God into the equation. So number three, God makes the difference. Come on, say that. And I hope I don't get too excited when I'm talking about this. But God makes the difference. Say that. God makes the the difference. Moses had an ordinary shepherd staff, but God turned it into a tool for deliverance. And I want you to hear me. God is going to use what you have to deliver you. Yes, it's normal to you. Yes, it's ordinary to you. Yes, it's basic to you. But here's what I love about it, that God makes the difference. What was different about Moses shepherd staff was because God was with him when he used it. And I want you to hear me when I say that. You think about the stuff that you have right now and it seems insignificant. Look, I'll give you an example. Here's Jesus with 5,000 men, not including women and children. And he looks around what's in the crowd. Not, come on, he looks around what do they have? And this is what he said, bring me the two fish and five loaves. And it looks like two ordinary fish and five loaves. And it is. But once you give it to God, hear me when I say that, that God makes, come on, God makes the difference. You think it's about the stuff, but it was never about the stuff in the first place. It was about having the presence of God. And that, I, look, I want you to hear me when I say that, that there have been marriages that have been reconciled. There have been parent-child uh, relationships that have been reconciled. There have been transformations in people's lives, and not because there was a grand gesture, but because God makes the difference. And look, I want you to hear me when I say that. How do you feed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves? How do you defeat an army of 10,000 with only 300? How do you win a fight in Gideon's case with just trumpets and pitchers and no weapons? Because God makes the difference. And this is what gives me confidence. And I'm on my way out of here, but I want y'all to hear me when I say this. Where I get my confidence from is that you can look at my life and people will judge me, right, by my mistakes, right, by, by the things that I have to suffer and go through. But here's what gives me joy because I took my little hand and I took it to God. And this is the thing that God didn't change nothing. But he start winning with it. And I hope that's the word for you because it may seem like, right, that you got more setbacks and it seems like you got more challenges and it looks like you got more obstacles and more hills and mountains and things to overcome. But I want you to hear me when I say this, that God makes the difference. People take stats, but God don't care about the odds. He will take what looks weak 
and make you win with it. And I, I look, I, I hope that's encouragement for somebody. He will take what looks weak and make you win with it. 300 men against over 10,000. And they took it and won with it. And this is what, and that's why I, I, you know what, I get excited when I talk about that. Why? Because in my life, if you was to know my life, you'd be praising God for me right now. Because God took all of my bad, all of my mess ups, all of my challenges, the mountains and everything that I have to go through and deal with. He took my little weak life and he started winning with it. And this is what I want to encourage you with tonight before I go off. I want you to hear me when I say that God makes the difference. When you add God to the equation, it don't matter. And this is why the Bible says that. It says, who can be against you if God is for you? Because it don't matter who is against you because God makes the difference. And so with that, guys, I got to go offline. I'm feeling that a little bit too tough, but I hope that was an encouragement for you tonight that God makes the difference. So if it blessed you, let it bless somebody else. Uh, I will see you guys next Wednesday at 8.30. I don't mean to keep y'all long at all. It's been 20 minutes. Go to our website and see all of the many things that we're doing right now. We're in the process of, of supplying care packages to the homeless. So, man, look, if you want to be a part of that, if you want to be a blessing, go to the website. You can sign up. You can be a part of our online community. Uh, there are a lot of things. It's www.thegodmovement.com. So with that, guys, I'm out of here. Y'all have a good evening, and I will see y'all next week in the I will see y'all next.